scoliosis spinal fusion surgery. What's the recovery time and what are the risks associated? And of course, are there any other options? When patients have a diagnosis of scoliosis, very often they're concerned about something called scoliosis surgery or scoliosis spinal fusion. And so to understand why the concerns exist there is because of what spinal fusion is. Traditional surgery and treatment options for scoliosis involve where the spine is actually fused together with rods and screws. And scoliosis, first of all, is an unnatural spinal curvature with rotation. And this curvature has to be measured as a minimal cob angle of 10 degrees or greater. Surgery involves fusing the most tilted vertebra to the most tilted vertebra below and, and putting the apex in between. And it's normally fusing it into one solid bone. It uses bone grafts to make the bone happen, but while the bones are actually fusing, they're normally using rods and screws into the spine to hold it in place. And spinal fusion tends to be the most common treatment option to reduce scoliosis and something that we call a traditional approach. There are two main scoliosis treatment approaches for pretty much leading to completely different outcomes. Traditional approaches tend to watch and wait tend not to, to treat curves until they've worsened. And then when they worsen, the number, number one treatment to reduce the curve, or really the only treatment they offer to reduce the curve, is something that we call spinal fusion, which is what I mentioned. However, conservative approaches, or more modern conservative approaches, the goals are to treat curves early, so therefore you're not reacting to curves progression, and you're trying to avoid scoliosis surgery being your number one by reducing curves early in, the, in their progressive cycle, so therefore you never have to face this type of surgical option. So when we look at surgery, what are some associated risks with the surgery itself? Well, the most reason why patients want to avoid it is, first of all, is that it limits function, right? 100%, that it limits function of the spine, that therefore it, uh, the spine is no longer to move. But uh, above that normal loss of function, what we know, it can lead to some infection, uh, meaning that where you're having uh, the surgery have, you can catch some kind of bacterial viral infection into your body, spine, or nerves themselves. It can unfortunately lead to nerve damage because they're putting screws into the spine and they're cutting out bone and they can damage nerves, spinal cords, it can lead to nerve damage. It can lead to unfortunately excessive blood loss where you may need transfusions, which has its own risk itself. It can lead to fusion pain, like right at the site of fusion, it can be pain. And it can also, unfortunately, the, the, the hardware could fail and you can have an allergic reaction to the hard hardware, which could require subsequent surgeries and multiple surgeries over your lifetime. And the result of these risks can lead to also some potential side effects, like I mentioned. Loss of spinal function is the number one side effect. Yes, the spine may be straighter, but it's straighter at a risk, at an expense, I'm sorry. And that expense is you can no longer move that area of the spine like it was supposed to, so it limits range of motion and flexibility of that area. It also can lead to some nerve damage. It can cause nerve damage. It can lead to pain. That could be a side effect. You could have an adverse reaction to the hardware, like I mentioned. It can also lead to hardware failure, where the spine, where the hardware can deteriorate and fail over time, where you need multiple surgeries. So curves can still progress beyond surgery because they can't fuse every single vertebra. I mean, whatever's below or above that surgical fusion can lead to, it can continue to progress with gravity over time or even further growth. It can also lead to psychological effects in somebody's life, meaning if they know they have metal and screws in their spine, they can be very hesitant to try anything new. And it can increase your risk of spinal injury, meaning if you have a severe injury, like a car accident or a severe fall, that these rods may come into play. They can pull out and they can break and they can pull out of the spine. So when, we con when you're considering spinal surgery and all the risks associated with, it's a very big decision. You're not just kind of going, okay, I'm going to have a straighter spine and nothing is going to be, there's nothing that's being taken away. There are significant side effects and risks associated with spinal surgery. It's not like it's, it's, a, it's an easy fix. Those are things that you have to consider. In addition, not only do you have these risks immediately, you have a recovery time. And you know every case is very, very different. But however, most patients are medicated initially for the, the pain that they're gonna be in in the days or weeks immediately following the surgery. And of course, the, the, as this patient continues, they're gonna have restrictions more like, most likely in any kind of lifting or bending. They're gonna normally be weaned off their meds within six or so weeks, but it really depends on the person how much pain they're experiencing. And normally they're checked within two weeks of their initial 
initial surgery to make sure everything is kind of holding in place. And then many patients are kind of cleared somewhere around that six to 12 weeks of time to kind of regain what we call regular activities, but normally not sports or anything like that, not high impact kind of stuff. Normally those things may be totally negated for the rest of your life. It just depends on your surgery and how severe it is. Now, the big question is, can, can scoliosis be treated non-surgically when we look at all these risks? It can be treated non-surgically with something that I call a, co a conservative proactive approach. Most importantly, that the, the, the smaller you treat a scoliosis, the more likely you are not to have surgery. Treat curves small, you're less likely to have those. Now, these are typically associated with treatment plans that are customized and guided by addressing the underlying structure of the spine, meaning trying to reduce the curve and not just reacting to it while it worsens. We're trying to reduce it while it's small, leads to a way better outcome. Unfortunately, the majority of patients that I see are patients that do exactly what we just went over. They are normally, they don't do much treatment when the curves are small, the curves progress, and now they're recommended surgery, and now they're trying to avoid it, and that's when I reach them. So the average patient I see is normally between 45 and 65 degrees. However, I much rather see 20, 30 degrees because I know with these patients, we get a much better result. And the reason why is because we use multiple condition-specific treatment disciplines integrated to deliver a very multi-leveled type of treatment option. We use chiropractic care. We use an office therapy that provides passive therapy like traction, neuromuscular education, uh, rehab, re, uh, self-corrective exercises. We also use customized prescribed bracing um, to help reduce the curve and help reduce the scoliosis and the deformities that we see in the person's body. We also use customized home exercises and we use something called SSEs. SSEs are scoliosis specific exercises that help or designed for that person's specific scoliosis in mind to help reduce the scoliosis that they have. So with all these things combined in one clinic, so everything integrates with the next thing, nothing is working against with each other, you can provide a very corrective scoliosis approach that doesn't require this type of invasive therapy or treatment like scoliosis surgery. So we like to reduce curves first this way. If the curves don't reduce or don't respond to this treatment, then, then surgery can be an answer. And then at least you know you tried everything in your power to try to prevent surgery because if the surgery goes wrong and you didn't try everything, you would say, well, what if I would have tried this instead? I may have not needed it. So we always recommend conservative treatment first, trying to reduce the scoliosis, if that doesn't respond, then you can always try surgery later. You know, for scoliosis reduction center, this conservative approach, it uses multiple forms of treatment. Again, it's all coordinated under one office. So therefore everything is literally uh, combined in such a way to provide the best options possible. And we normally say if that doesn't work, then you can kind of consider recommending or looking at surgery. If that recommendation was given to you, you can try considering that. But we always recommend less invasive approaches first to help reduce the scoliosis so you don't have to face scoliosis surgery. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.